Hi there, everyone. Um, my name is Ben Kellerhals. I'm an intern here with uh, the Journey Through Hollow Ground. Thank you for joining us uh, today. We're having a great talk presentation with Mansion House uh, 1757. And uh, here today to talk with us about that is George Keeney. Welcome. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh, just to give you a little bit of background on us and Mansion House 1757, my wife and I, Cindy, uh, we purchased the inn May 15th of uh, 2020, which was a highly and, uh, bright move to do in the middle of a pandemic, but uh, everything's worked out tremendously. Um, our family, what we've done is we've uh, we've taken Mansion House and we've uh, basically rebranded it back to the original name. It was originally called Mansion House back in the, uh, when it was first first built by the local in Fairfield, because it was the largest um, house in Fairfield at the time. So uh, we took the inn and we basically rebranded as a um, you know boutique inn with an upscale restaurant. In my profession, I'm a you know chef in the hospitality industry uh, for you know for a little over four decades. But it's a you know, boutique inn with six rooms, our restaurant and tavern, and uh, a little bit of history in reference to the inn. The inn, the land was granted back in 1755 from uh, Lord Baltimore. He, he well, he actually gave a uh, 5,000 acres to um, Charles Carroll III of Carrollton, who's one of the uh, individuals who signed the Declaration of Independence. And back at the time, he was the wealthiest man in America. And I believe also the only Irish Catholic to sign the uh, Declaration of Independence. Well, he granted 247 acres to Squire John Miller in 1755. And the original parts of the inn were built in 1757. So the original parts of the inn now, that's uh, what we call the Carroll Suite. And down below, we have what we, um, we refer to as the chef's table room, which is like a, a private dining experience away from like everything else that we have going on at the restaurant. And then uh, in, um, uh, and actually Squire John Miller, he was um, Patrick Henry's uncle by marriage. And Patrick Henry had, had spent some significant time at the inn. So um, then it's about 1767, 1768. And keep in mind, I'm a chef, I'm not a historian, but I did a lot of research before we purchased. But um, after the Mason-Dixon line was established, then the uh, mansion house was then in Pennsylvania. It was no longer in Maryland. So they, you know, they had that change. And just through the years, um, you know, besides, you know, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, um, individuals who spent significant time there, Thaddeus Stevens, the abolitionist, he spent time there when he was uh, doing the, uh, what they called the Tapeworm Railroad, which is never completed due to lack of funds. And I think 80 years later, they had adequate funds and they went ahead and what he built, what he established, they built on that. But, um, you know, he was very prominent in the area. He was a, a professor at today is what's Gettysburg College. He was also a prominent attorney in town. And he also had a couple of furnaces lo located in the area. And we actually have one of his furnaces that was built um, about two miles from the inn. It's, uh, you know, now in our tavern. And then going on through the years, you know, in addition to that, it was part of the Underground Railroad. It was, you know, during the retreat from Gettysburg, um, you know, Lee and his men, you know, went through there. They also like, um, you know, during that time, uh, um, Jeb Stewart was known for his raids throughout the area, horses, food, alcohol, um, and so forth. And as, as time progressed, you know, through history, there's also even like, as we move closer, you know, into, uh, you know, into, you know, the you know, 50s, 60s, et cetera, um, you know, the Eisenhowers would come there, not a tremendous amount with Dwight. Dwight was, I think, a bit of a homebody. He settled in Gettysburg uh, area after his retirement. Well, Mamie, after his, he passed in 1969, she was uh, very easy to approach Gettysburg. She had usually one Secret Service agent with her, and she was very friendly and kind. And she would come into what now is the chef's table area, and she would have lunch, and she would play cards with her girlfriend. And uh, like I said, that was in the 70s when the Hammond family owned it uh, from 1970 to 1977. And they changed the name of the inn at that time to the Fairfield Inn. So, and it stayed that way until we purchased it, you know, in 2020. So she would be there, actually Jean Stapleton, most of us know her as Edith and all in the family, if you're old enough. Um, she established what was called, it's now still in, um, you know, still operating today at the Totem Pole Playhouse. She uh, would stay at Mansion House and she would, uh, she would invite um, Broadway and off-Broadway actors and actresses over the summer to come down to uh, the totem pole in order to, you know, perform and whatnot. So you had that going on. You had, like I say, you had, you know, the Eisenhowers. It's just always been like a, like a hub of, uh, I guess, excitement in the town. And we're bringing a lot of that back. We've had tremendous support from the local community as well as, um, you know, a lot of the, um, you, know, you know, people visiting our, our area, you know, for obvious reasons. And, you know, which a lot of you probably tuning into this are like, oh, absolutely, are getting Gettysburg. But it's just, it's just amazing to walk through the inn. So uh, that, in a, you know, a summary is kind of a, where we are, a little bit of history about it. And once again, keep in mind, my profession is hospitality and chef. It's, you know, by no stretch of the imagination, I'm a historian, but I did do a lot of research to you know find a lot of the information that I found so 
Awesome. Thanks. Uh, that's wow. A lot of fun characters through the years and, and you know, passes hands and whatnot. I, I think at this point, I'd like to uh, invite on Anjali uh, Roos, one of my fellow interns, and we'll maybe field some questions at you as they come in and just anything to further this nice conversation. Anjali, do you want to yeah, open up a I'll, question? Yeah, I'll kick off the questions. Um, so one of the first questions we have for you, what was the research process like for you in creating the site? Well, uh, essentially, and thank you very much, by the way, good, good afternoon. But uh, essentially, you know, what we did is, you know, we, we were, um, we looked originally, believe it or not, at the cash down end. And I I'd worked in that, uh, as a, you know, the chef at that uh, location from 96 to 2000, another tremendous, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, history, um, you know, uh, part of history. But, um, you know, that didn't work out. So a friend of ours approached us about a week later and said, hey, would you like to look at something similar? So we did. And just, um, you know, walking through the inn and my wife and I were getting ready to leave town in about a day or two. And we walked through with a friend of ours who was the real estate agent and uh, just looking at things. And our big thing was, you know, is it workable? You know, is it, so it's a big building. It's 10,000 square feet. And was it workable? We're looking at, you know, obviously for, you know, we wanted to establish, a, you know, a farm to table restaurant wherever we're going to be, which we've been very fortunate here in Adams County. We have like 19 partners now that we do farm to table with. But um, just looking at it, we were like, you know, and when we went on vacation, we started saying, yeah, I, it's got potential. It's got, you know, what we think it needs. It definitely needed some TLC. I mean, it's very structurally sound. A lot of what we did was cosmetic. We, uh, so then when we moved forward with that, that was, uh, you know, uh, May 15th of 2020, we purchased the inn and we went about doing, and the, believe me, this is not a complaint. We went about doing our 14 to 16 hour days. And every day you woke up, you popped out of bed. It was just exciting. And it's, it's hard work, but like I say, I'm a, I'm a lifer and my wife has been with me forever and our son, Dan and uh, friends and family who assisted us with it. And um, it just became a labor of love and everything just started to evolve. And it, you know, you started to see, um, I almost wish like I had more vivid, we did take pictures and things, but I wish I had more vivid memories of what it was because people walk in now who stayed there five, 10 years ago and they're like, oh my goodness. And my wife's just really good at decorating. That's not what she does professionally. She's actually a director of victim services here in Adams County, which she's retiring from in May so she can focus 100% on the end. But uh, she just does a fantastic job. We, we, um, we want to honor history and we want to enjoy the history, but we also want our guests to have some of the conveniences, you know, we, uh, the smart TVs that are in the room or, you know, Keurig machines or mini fridges or central air and heat, that's helpful. But we, we still, though, people, you come in, you still feel the vibe of, uh, you know, of the history that's there. And you can just, you can just feel it's just absolutely tremendous. So. Yeah, what if it's, it's interesting, you know, all the sites that are, uh, we might go to virtually or in person. Now, many of them also have to operate as an in at the same time, right? To have both of those things happening. Um, on, on that basis, what was the house like when you got it? Was there a lot of changes that needed to be made to make it look more historical or accurate to what have would have looked like before? No, a lot of it was like um, decluttering um, and just giving it like and painting like some of the rooms you would go into. I my understanding from talking to some people that under uh, with colonial history, they were saying uh, apparently at that time one of the ways to show your wealth or your you know your worth was you painted in loud colors because I guess apparently you know, having pigmentation in um, in paint at that time it was expensive. So people when you go into these colonial houses like oh my goodness they had no sense of uh, no sense of color or decorating or whatnot. So my wife a lot of the rooms were just like was just a matter of you know, lightening up the room you know maybe three coats of uh, a light paint or a like slight off white paint because it's you know, just to brighten things up and you know the the cleaning and like i say the the, the end itself is extremely structurally sound i'm, I'm a i'm a big guy and i walk through the hand and I, granted there's spots where you have a little floor you know, the steps might lean a little bit or the floor might lean a little bit and 264 years there's going to be a smidget of settling but uh just to walk through there there's no place i walk through the end where the floor creaks i can actually sneak up on you so that's pretty hard to do with a with an individual my size so uh it just uh it was mostly, like I say, it was all, it was cosmetic. It was taking down wallpaper that was falling down or, you know, sanding a floor or, you know, fixing some bricks. Like, and when we did the bricks, uh, you know, a, a good friend of mine from high school is a Mason. And we thought about, it. we said, well, do we want to repoint? We're like, no, 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 keep the rustic look. We wanted to keep as much and capture as much of, you know, the rustic look. And my wife was really big into like, um, you know, the pillows, the blankets, the towels, they've got to be soft. And 
I, I actually, you know, I stayed at the inn at different rooms at different times. And I said to my wife, how come our, how come our, uh, our sheets aren't as comfortable at home? So maybe after some of these sheets get some use, we'll get them secondhand at the house. So, uh, but it's just, uh, we just try to make it very uh, comfortable and welcoming. And one of our, um, you know, our catchphrase, I guess our thing that we always focus on every once in a while, our wife and I, we have to remind each other is hospitality experience. We want people to come and truly, you know, feel, you know, how, how we feel about them. And we're so happy to have them there. And we've been very fortunate to be supported not you know like i say not only by the locals but you know people traveling and people coming to gettysburg and and we you know we just always want to work very hard to earn your business and to you know to make it as enjoyable as possible so that's that's kind of how we're looking so there was mostly like i say it was just it was a lot of cosmetic things uh but nothing you know um nothing really tremendously uh you know, as far as like, uh, you know, a, a huge expense going into, you know, redoing this or redoing that, they, you know, everything about it was nice that, you know, they, they, this heat and central air was just put in, you know, four years you know, before we bought it. Um, you know, the, the water there is fantastic. The electrical system is amazing. You know, the roof is fairly, that's one of the things about it, the roof is fairly new. So there's just so much about it that's, uh, you know, it was a positive, but there was still, like I say, you had to there's a, just a, I guess mostly was just elbow grease. And then with the kitchen, just getting things organized and getting it to where there'd be a flow. And we've been really fortunate with our staff because, um, yeah, we, we're not experienced with a lot of folks have, you know, with the uh, help and things like that. But I think uh, so much of that's contributed to the fact that you, you treat people with respect and, you know, people who've worked with me through the years and work with Cindy and whatnot, they're, you know, they've been uh, friends or they've become friends, our, our servers, our bartenders, our, our housekeepers, um, everything, the, the, everything just comes together. And, yeah, you know, we've been you know very fortunate that way, but a lot of it, like I hear these nightmare stories, but it's like, well, how are, you, how are you treating your people? Are you treating them like human beings? Are you treating them with respect? And we get such a, a tremendous contribution from our staff because they have a, a wealth of experience from what they've done before. And a lot of them, you know, they're, they have a uh, full-time jobs They're you know, they teach, but they're a waitress some one or two nights a week. And it's like their escape. They love it. It's like, they're coming there. They're happy. They're not like working a five day grind and, you know, Oh my gosh, I just got to get through the weekend. And so that's, it's nice. And it's, it's good for them too. Like our servers, you know, it's, um, you know, it's uh, fun money, so to speak, when they're the tips and things of that nature. So they, you know, maybe pay a little bit more if it's a kid's college, or maybe it's a, like a nicer vacation or a better Christmas or whatever it might be. But um, our staff, I can honestly say that we have everyone on the staff. They're just genuinely nice people. And that's what we want to keep attracting is, you know, to take care of our guests. And, you know, and like I say, we want to continue to always, regardless of how well things have gone, we want to continue to earn everybody's uh, business. And, uh, you know, we want a place when you leave Mansion House, we want you walking out the door just thinking like, gosh, I had so much fun and I am relaxed. So that's the goal. We're not there. We're not there to intimidate you with four different forks and three different spoons. And I don't know what I should do. And you no, know, come in and relax and have a good meal, have good drinks, nice service and enjoy yourself. And, you know, when you're staying at the end, just relax and have fun. And, you know, if we can help out in any way to make your experience nicer, you know, please let us know. I, all, all our guests, they have my cell phone. When you're checking in, you have my cell phone. You know, and I thought about that. I was like, I've never stayed anywhere where I had the owner's cell phone. You got a concern, something comes up, you call me, text me, let me know. We'll, you know, if there's something we can address, we'll fix it right away. So um, we try to, we're trying to make ourselves different uh, from everybody else. It's not just, it's not a business. It's not like a business as usual, time to make the donuts. You know, we're, we want to go and we want, you know, we love what we do. I'm a, like I say, uh, it's, it's, it's hard work in a way, but it's not, it, it isn't, it isn't. It's just, you know, it's sometimes it's what you do and it's, it's enjoyable and seeing the reactions of our guests it, it, you know, it, it's cool. And, uh, you know, our, our staff, they're just tremendous, tremendous people. So we're really lucky that way. Thank you. Um, that seems like a wonderful, wonderful place. Um, do you offer any tours or run events for visitors who aren't staying at the inn? How do you, do you communicate with the larger public in any way? Yeah. Um, what we've done is, um, you know, prior we were doing it ourselves. I was doing it in our, in our daughter. She has a, you know, she's a full-time job in what she does, but she's much more tech savvy than I am. I'm getting pretty good and working on my Excel spreadsheets for a 60 year old man. I, I, uh, I, I'm decent, but by no stretch of the imagination, my 25 or 28. And uh, we've been smart enough to listen to younger people and uh, use them as a tool. And like my daughter or just different people like the Destination Gettysburg and some of the people in the area, I just, you know, listen to them. You know what? They may be half my age. I'm old enough to be their dad, in some case, their grandfather. But, um, you know, be open and listen to what they have to say. So 
Paige started with us and uh, she taught me a lot about, you know, we build our own website and things of that nature. And, you know, recently on um, Nicole, who um, she, you know, had worked with Destination Gettysburg, she actually worked with the Washington Nationals, you know, helping with marketing and whatnot. She had uh, been working with us as a server and we've hired her on in the capacity of taking care of our marketing. So she'll go ahead and she'll put out, you know, besides Facebook and Instagram and things of that nature and help us with, you know, we, we don't do a lot because I know it's a, it's not really passe, but there's still folks that um, rely on, you know, print advertisement, but um, she's done a tremendous job. So, and what's really we've seen this year already is nearby us about two miles away. And that's the nice thing about our location. There's so much to do two miles away. We have a, a, a ski resort, you know, a mile away. We have a golf course, two miles away. We have another golf course. There's wineries, there's breweries, there's a place people can go. If you like, if you enjoy, you know, shooting guns, there's a place close by, you can go do that uh, at Orvis, um, you know, and just all the different things. And we've worked really hard also, you know, through the years of establishing good relationships with other restaurants and, you know, pretty much every restaurant in the area. I'm, if at a minimum, I'm, a, I'm on a, you know, a friendly relationship with you if you're not, a, you know, a friend or a close friend or a longtime friend. So, you know, we're big and then, you know, we're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays for, for dining. You know, we're, we're open 365 as far as the uh, boutique in. But um, just, you know, places we can recommend people, you know, around Gettysburg. And um, I think part of it, you know, doing it a long time, you understand the importance of that and networking and whatnot. And uh, I think sometimes people have a tendency, they, they want to hover over their little piece of whatever it is they have. And, you know, they're, they will talk, you know, let's say they won't talk pleasantly about other operations. Uh, that, that's so important to have a great relationship with people in the area. And it's nice to be able to say, you know, because you can't, you know, we, we offer a wonderful certain, you know, situation. People enjoy the meals and such and so forth. But you know what? Sometimes you want something a little different, you know, so we'll send you to town and, you know, go to the Blue Gray if you like. You want a, a great sports bar, good burgers, great wings, or you want to, you know, a nice Irish pub, Gary, uh, Gary Owen. You know, Kevin does a fantastic job there. Jamie over at, you know. Uh, and her restaurant does a fantastic job. It's just the Dobbin House, you know, they're another historic property and, and uh, you know, the, the family there, what they've done and Rick, what he's built through the years. And it just, there's, yeah, we, we try to network like that as much as possible. Well, we've seen a lot recently with Nicole and she's helped us out tremendously, like, especially like the ski season. It's just like, it's like night and day compared to last year. And I understand now things aren't, uh, is, I guess, I don't know what you'd say, tense or whatnot with the uh the pandemic i don't watch tv so i don't i don't know what level of you know so i'm supposed to be or scared or whatever i'm supposed to be i don't know but um you know we've abided by whatever was required you know by you know by the government and doing things the appropriate manner and it wasn't always convenient or you know conducive towards business but you know you're you have no choice you got to do what you got to do and you have to get through that so but nicole's just done a fantastic job for us and we've seen you know we've got a tremendous amount of folks coming over from ski liberty that are you know staying with us and they're coming for dinner along with you know just the, the regulars we always see you know around here so um we just continue to do that work on that marketing plan and we're and like i say that we're fortunate to have the people that are affiliated with us that are you know folks that uh, at one point you know they're they were someone you were hiring and then now they've become like friends and, you know, people that you rely on very heavily, um, but in a positive way. That's awesome. You know? um, well, I think we have time for one more question. I think we're going to ask this one. Um, <laughs> what inspired you and your wife to, to buy this place? I think you mentioned it was just 2020. And on with that, might you have any advice for anyone generally watching that might be interested in, any kind of historical preservation. It's a really interesting place you got. Well, um, like I say, just one day, Cindy, I was just laying there in bed one night and she says, hey, what do you think about this? And I was like, hmm, give me a minute. And I thought about it for a minute and because I, I, it's like people say, oh, is this your lifelong dream? No, no, it wasn't. I've, I've had a tremendous career. I've uh, been fortunate. I had a lot of you know, wonderful, wonderful owners I've worked with that have supported what we were trying to do, whatever operation it was. But, um, you know, she mentioned it and I thought about it and I gave it a lot of, you know, some thought. I said, well, let's look into it. So we just started looking into it. And um, but the thing, I guess, you know, going into it, because I, I see folks who do it and let's this is for some reason, this is one of the industries where you have a tremendous amount of folks who get involved because they think it's going to be fun or it's going to be cool or whatever. And, you know, the type of thing where like Uncle Joe makes the best ribs and they might truly be the best ribs ever, ever. But Uncle Joe, there's a thing called a P&L statement. 
you've got to make money. You've got to be able to you know, service your debt and uh, stay in business and do what you have to do. So, it, you know, unfortunately, you know, there's a high percentage of times where people get involved where they don't have much experience, but I, I'm not sure why they, the hospitality industry is the field where people think they know. And it's, it's more than just cooking. Like as a, as a chef, you know, my guess you, cooking is like automatic. That's, I could do that in my sleep. The, you know, the challenging parts is, you know, with your staff and retention of staff and how do you want to package yourself and, you know, with your uh, branding and things of that nature. And like I say, staying ahead on things with your, your bills and having a plan and, you know, you know what are your, some of your, uh, you know, significant long-term things you want to do. And, uh, but as far as advice, I'd say, make sure when you're getting into you, number one, you know what you're getting into, um, you, you know, you know who you're dealing with. You have somebody who has your genuine interest in mind, uh, who has experience doing this. And, um, you know, right now for us, like for, we're looking at, we, we have a garden that's on the property. We, we started a thing last June. We called it the groove in the garden where every Thursday night we have live music, uh, from six to eight 30. We've continued it. Now we moved it indoors, obviously, but like the other day I met with a, you know, a local guy, Steve Zimmerman. He's a fantastic when it comes to landscaping and Steve and I are looking at sodding it. Cause I wanted to like, when you walk out there, you can go out there. It's like carpet. You're walking in your bare feet and it's just really nice out there. It was nice. Don't get me wrong, but, uh, I think we can make it nicer. And, you know, just met yesterday with Kyle Miller. I've known Kyle since he was in high school and he's, uh, you know, he's in his thirties now. He has a, a wonderful, con uh, you know, business. He does concrete and Kyle and I are looking at the parking lot right now. The parking lot's not paid. It's like a stone kind of used to be paid, but sort of, you know, so we're looking at that, you know, planning towards, you know, upgrading that and just making that more. And we've never had anybody complain as, oh, your parking lot, this or that. It's, no, we haven't had the complaints, but we're just trying to stay ahead of it and continue just to take what we have and just enhance it and just make it better any way that we can. So, uh, but yeah, somebody getting into it. I recently, friends of ours bought a hotel and I gave them the list of the things they needed to take care of. They're going to have a bar. After they saw the list, they decided that maybe we should just hire somebody who wants to do this, you know, or have somebody who wants to lease it from us. Because so there's a lot of little details there. And, and that they're like I say, for me, it's a labor of love. I love what I do. I enjoy what I do. I probably um, like I told my wife, I said, I'd sleep at the end if I could. You know, I just I just love it. But um, it's not for everybody by any stretch of the imagination. The hospitality industry, you know, it's hard work and whatnot. And, you know, it's if you don't love what you do, oh boy, oh boy, I could not imagine uh, doing this, if it was something that I thought would be like cool or be a nice hobby. So, but yeah, the advice, I don't know, mate, talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. If you know what you're doing, great. But, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it can be a lovely field. It can be a lot of fun, but it can also turn into a nightmare very, very quickly. So. Well, great. Um, and it's, yeah, we think it's also awesome. You, you mentioned that you are the chef yourself. You can tie in all kinds of classic American recipes or, or or whatnot. Um, well, thank you so much for your time today. We really, well, thank you. really appreciate it. We and appreciate uh, you thinking about us. Yeah, and I, I'm sure we're all anyone that's in the Fairfield, PA area is definitely really excited now to come check it out. And everyone at home, thank you for tuning in, and we'll be here next week at, at the same time, 12 p.m. Eastern, as we virtually visit Mount Zion Historic Park. Thanks, everybody.